Hello, quick teardown today. We're going to be looking at a pore vacuum. Um, so I've seen these on YouTube. I'm not gonna go over them too much because other people have done reviews already, but uh, long story short, I don't think they worked very well. At least it's, this one didn't work very well for me. It was about 20 bucks on Amazon and it's got all these interchangeable tips that simply um, press onto these O-rings. Um, and there's four of them, it comes with them. One of them is pre-installed and it has all these little filters that you can swap on to the end. Um, basic premise of this is it's a small vacuum that um, pumps air out of this area, creating low pressure area, and hopefully sucks all the dirt out of your face. However, it, in my experience, has not worked very well for that. Um, disassembly is pretty simple, but let's get started. This one's got a LCD, it's a power key, and we can increase and decrease the amount of air. So I pried off the bottom with a metal pry tool, and we will proceed to simply pop open the casing, and the casing is very easy to open. Inside the device, we have a electric motor, pump, a silicone tube connecting the orifice up here to the intake part of the pump, a lithium ion polymer battery connected to the main board without a protection built in, and a main board with buzzer and all the requ requisite electronic components. That simply unplugs, and there doesn't look to be any connectors inside this device. In order to get further inside, we will use screwdriver to get the board off. We'll be able to have a quick look at how this is laid out. It looks like the battery is a single cell, 3.7 volts, free standard lithium ion battery. Board comes out easily. And we have the LCD and all the buttons. The board looks pretty simple. Um, microcontroller does not have labels on it, um, but I'm guessing it's probably one of those one-time programmable single chip micros. Looks like we've got a voltage regulator or something there, so maybe some battery protection, DWLO ones. Yep, that's probably a DWLO one and a transistor. Um, there's obviously going to be a charger chip connected to the device somehow. Could simply be a resistor, if I'm not mistaken. Looks like that, uh, oh, that's a battery, nope. Um, let's connect it over here and it loops around like that through a bunch of zero ohm resistors. It's kind of odd. Um, yeah. yeah, it looks like it just connects right to the battery. Yeah, it looks, uh, yeah, there's a resistor going on there, a very small one. I'm assuming it charges very, very slowly. It doesn't look like it's got a battery charger chip in it. Or does it? Quite possibly this could be it. That could be the battery charger. But I'm not quite sure. Um, it's quite hard to read all these parts. Let's see if we can zoom in. Maybe someone can Google that and uh, figure out what that is. Nevertheless, uh, one of these devices should be a FET for switching the motor because it does have five speeds and it will, it will probably be achieving those five speeds using some form of PWM. Um, other than that, there's not very much inside. Uh, the battery, I was surprised that it does not use an 18650, but I guess the most interesting part of this device is going to be the pump. It's driven by a brushed DC motor, pretty similar to one you'd find in a toy, and it looks to be a diaphragm type pump. So let's open it up. Looks like there's three screws on the top. They're pretty long. 
These are probably what hold the pump together, and there is a washer. Pump is plastic, and I assume it can provide both pressure and suction. Let's try to get this apart. It is sort of glued with the anti-vibration foamy tape here, uh, which we may be able to simply cut with our screwdriver here. I doubt it comes. Inside the pump, immediately we can see the eccentric lobe or the um, motor attachment with the shaft um, off-center, and that is probably what provides reciprocating motion. Likely, if I'm not mistaken, this is at an angle as well. Yes, this is at an angle from center. So, in essence, what the motor does is this. You can see little diaphragms up there. So when it's doing that, it's pumping. And the pump head is up here under this gasket. And these are the small diaphragms that do the actual pumping. If we split that open here, we can probably we can get a better look at the diaphragms. Diaphragms are one piece molded with the gasket. And we can visualize the operation of the pump moving in and out on the in stroke. and the out strokes, we have small valves here. I'm not sure if they're uh, visible. Uh, can we open that? This may not be openable. I feel like it is not openable based on the fact that, that yeah, this does not look very openable. Um, so since we don't want to necessarily break the pump yet, um, I assume there's just some valves in here, and the orifice for the intake is a little bit larger in diameter than the outtake. So that's about it for the pump. It's um interesting little design. Um, it's not very much to go wrong other than maybe the valves getting clogged because there are a lot of small orifices. The valve appears to be, uh, there appears to be a little bit more rubber inside there. This looks like it's sealed shut since there's no um, gasket here to allow it to come apart. Uh, with that said, um, this pump should be able to handle liquid, um, I would assume, um, considering this is a sealed rubber design. And that may make it useful for projects and whatnot. Okay, that's about it for the quick teardown of the poor vacuum and internal pump. I hope that was somewhat interesting or informative. Thanks for watching.